So E codes. Uh, can you please review E codes and give us the difference between ICD-9 and how they're going to change in ICD-10? So uh, some people like to say, well, E codes go away in in ICD-10. Well, they're just not called E codes anymore. They don't really go away. They're just expanded. They're more in depth, like the rest of uh, ICD-10 is. Uh, again, so E codes, yes, you could say they've gone away, or let's just say they've been updated and revised a little bit. They tweaked them. So the basics about E-codes, if you're not familiar with them, they've got some guidelines. Now, E-codes have their own index area in your manuals, in your ICD manual. So if you need to look something up, you can do it from there. Uh, but again, even in the tabular, you know, it's pretty easy to, to get through them. Uh, so the guidelines, an E-code may be used with any code in the range of uh, 001 to VA2.9. Uh, let's see, which indicate an injury, poisoning, or adverse effect due to an external cause. Assign the appropriate E-code for all initial treatments of an injury, poisoning, or adverse effect of drugs. Uh, E codes are not used for subsequent visits. They're only used in initial visits. Very important. That's a guideline that you need to know. Use a late effect E code for subsequent visits when a late effect of the initial injury or poisoning is being treated. There is no late effect E code for adverse effect of drugs. Use the full range of E codes to completely describe the cause the intent and the place of occurrence, if applicable, for all injuries, poisonings, and adverse effects of drugs. Again, there are chances where you might have to use more than one e-code. Okay, that's been known to happen. Uh, assign as many e-codes as necessary to fully explain each cause. If only one e-code can be recorded, assign the e-code most related to the principal diagnosis. And again, uh, if you uh, get on YouTube, sometimes there's some funnies about e-codes and uh, the descriptions of them. You know, and I can't think of any multiple e-codes just right off the top of my head. But if a person was, you know, uh, walking across the street and got hit by a bike, and then turned around and got hit by a bus. You know, there's actually two separate e-codes for that. Um, okay, uh, where was I? Uh, six. The selection of the appropriate e-code is guided by the index to external causes, which is located after the alphabetic index to diseases, and by inclusion and exclusion notes in the tabular list. Okay, uh, and it, it's. Uh, I would. I would tab it in my manual, your e-code index. An e-code can never be a principal first listed diagnosis. That is kind of the very first rule that you learn about e-codes, can never be listed first. Okay, uh, And the second rule probably you learn about e-codes is uh, it's an, on the initial visit. All right, so what type of categories would we see that we would expect to use an e-code? So I made a list of those. Transport accidents. Uh, that's talking about you're riding your bike and you fell off your bike and you broke your arm. Uh, you are a passenger in a bus on the movie. Uh, what was that movie where the lady couldn't slow down on the bus, you know? Uh, and so, uh, you know, uh, you got dehydrated because you had to stay in a bus for 24 hours and couldn't eat nor drink anything. Uh, transport accidents. It could be uh, a bike, it could be a vehicle, it could be an airplane, anything that transports you from one place to another place. Poisoning and adverse effect of drugs, medicinal substances, and biologicals. All right, so poisoning because uh, you uh, had taken a medication that the doctor prescribed to you, but you accidentally took it in the wrong way, not the way it was listed on the label. Or you took the medication the way it was prescribed, uh, but you had an adverse effect, you broke out in hives. Uh, 
um, let's see, and this also could be um, poisoning because you, um, you know, you at, you went to go collect some uh, uh, healthy salad stuff out in the woods because you read a book about it or saw it on YouTube, and you, you end up eating poison ivy, which could be a really bad thing, right? Okay, so that would be a poisoning. Uh, accidental falls. Uh, and they have that broken down uh, pretty specifically. You know, did you fall going up the steps? Did you fall going down the steps? Did you fall because uh, someone accidentally pushed you? Did you uh, slip on a carpet? Did you slip on the ice? Uh, I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. If it's happened, there's a code for it. Uh, accidents caused by fire and flames, and also that's pretty diverse. Uh, accident caused because you were, you know, putting fire in your fireplace at your home, uh, or let's say you uh, have a gas stove and you caught your sleeve in it, or you um, uh, had a can of hairspray and uh, you you went to spray. Uh, you know somebody's hair and they were smoking a cigarette poof you know all kinds of accidents with flames accidents due to natural and environmental factors uh, you could slip and fall on the ice because it's icy uh, or you slip and fell off a cliff uh, again, environmental factors. Late effects of accidents, assaults, and self-injury. You jumped off a building. You um, were attacked and mugged, and um, you know uh, you had an accident and uh, busted your leg. Uh, assaults are purposely inflicted injuries. Uh, again, this one gets you know it's like well, okay, assault. But then assault or purposely inflicted injury. There was one that was always got the students that was in the Carol Buck book. I don't know if it's still there, but it was such a great one. Uh, it was uh, a person was uh, poisoned with snake venom in their drink. And it ended up being an assault code that they put in there. And they kept like, well, how do you know it's an assault? And the the book explained it that people don't put snake venom in drinks for just no reason. You know, it was an assault. Um, so, again, I thought that was a – I'll never forget that one. Uh, suicide or self-inflicted injury. Again, you know, if somebody were to um, – you know, there's all different ways, like jumping off a building or something. But there's different ways for suicide and or self-inflicted injury. Okay, now let's scroll down here and let's look at the differences between the external causes of morbidity in um, ICD-9. It's going to be E800 through E999. But in ICD-10, the same categories are there uh, with V00 through uh, V98. All right? It's just they've changed the code and they've expanded the code. So I came up with an example and I didn't have time to pull a picture of Mr. Green Jeans, but I may be dating myself a little bit uh, for however many of you remember Mr. Green Jeans. Uh, so he fell off, he fell from a barn roof. That's all the information we've got. Uh, we don't know, uh, you know, what was going on. We just know he fell from the barn roof. So in ICD-9, that would be E987.1, falling from high place, undetermined whether accidental or purposely inflicted, uh, other man-made structure because they have a residence. So a barn would not be a residence. A barn is an other man-made uh, structure. There's another code for a, I think it's commercial property maybe or something. So you've got residential, other man-made, or um, – uh, like a commercial building. So that seems pretty diverse to me. It's like, oh, wow, you know, that, that uh, captures a lot. But ICD-10 gets the same information, but on steroids. Now, a little hint, though. You know you've got these uh, gyms and crosswalks that you can use where you can type in a code and get the, uh, you know, type in the ICD-9 code and get the ICD-10 code, you can type in 401.9 for uh, essential hypertension and you'll get I-10, you know, or you type in I-10 and you'll get all three of the the um, uh, hypertension codes, malignant, benign, and, and essential, 
Okay, so you can do that. You can't really do that with ECODES because they're so diverse in ICD-10. They don't match up. They don't map. All right. Uh, here you go. So the same code, or pretty close to the equivalent. Looky here. You can get down here and get all of them. Is that all of them? Yeah, we're, that's all of them. So here's our choices in ICD-10. We have a, a W13, they're all W13s. We got point zero through point nine, and we've got fall from out of or through balcony. Uh, we've got through uh, out of or, th or through a bridge. We've got out or through a roof, uh, fall through the floor, fall from out of or through a window, fall from or out through other building or structure, and out of through building not otherwise specified. Now, mind you, this even can get broke down even more, and there's other codes that maybe would even be more descriptive, but, you know, I looked for a code for a fall, um, and, you know, not saying it's residential, not saying whether it's... Um, Oh, well, actually, I think, now, don't quote me on this, but I think these were all the ones that came up for not, you know, it's not residential, it's not commercial, so a man-made structure. Well, these are all the ones that could have come through a man-made structure. So uh, we know he fell from the roof, so maybe W13.2 uh, might be uh, the best one. So... Anyway, or he could have fall through, fallen through the window in the front of the barn. I don't know. We didn't get enough information, I guess, but it said roof. So interesting, isn't it? Just, just really, really diverse. There's the difference between the E codes and um, the V codes. Now, this is one little aspect. There's actually even more um, diversity with these where you can do uh, more codes. So maybe we'll reflect on that in the future and give a, a more detailed scenario where it's not just the physical fall, but uh, you can code the whole picture with ICD-10, uh, you know, and like what he had for lunch that day, you know, a bologna sandwich, and, and I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Must be hungry. Yeah, I am. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun to look at the e-codes. Get more CPC exam tips, coding certification training, and CEU credits. Go to www.codingcertification.org.